All right, so in this session, I'm going to be defining some terms in order to answer the question of, is the Bible the Word of God, or is the Word of God something else? So first, I have a text. A text is a written work. A letter is a written message to a specific party. A poem is a form of writing that's usually rhythmic and metaphorical. Um, scripture is a text written under the inspiration of the divine. The Bible is a collection of texts and some scriptures, or it can be said that it's a book about God. The word, specifically if we're referring to John chapter one, um, is the word logos, which means the logic, the mentality, the intention, uh, God, consciousness, love, frequency, voice, sound, creativity, light, essence. It has a lot of meanings, but none of them actually refer to something written. Rhema, another word that can also be translated into word, means utterance, something spoken, or to be inspired or quickened. Again, has more to do with speaking than it does writing. And then prophecy, just because that might come up, is something said or done under the inspiration of God. John 1 and 1 says that in the beginning was the word. The word word is logos, which has many meanings. None of them refer to anything uh, written. John 1 and 1 says that the logos, that word, is God. That's actually the only place in scripture where it mentions the word of God written and presented in that way. There are many words that can be translated to the English word for word, but they specifically use logos. So the only way that you can play the translation game is if you're giving words that mean the same things that logos does not words that also translate to the English word, word. They weren't speaking English, they weren't even speaking Greek, they were speaking Aramaic. So Logos just gets us closer to the Aramaic words that they were using. But I'll digress for a moment. 2 Timothy 3.16, this is a popular verse, and it says that all scripture, as I defined earlier, is inspired by God. It's God-breathed. The Bible only says that scripture is inspired by God. It never says or implies that scripture is God. It says that it's inspired and useful for teaching, for rebuke, for correction and training. There is no verse that you can find in the Bible that says or implies that scripture is God. It can be said that it's a God-given tool, but at no point does the narratives of the text found in the 66 books of the Bible that most people have, does it ever refer to scripture as God or God as a book? Scripturally, to be the word is to be God, according to John 1. The scriptures are about the word, but are not the word. We can read where the word becomes flesh, but never can we read where it became texts. Uh, the Bible did not exist when many of the texts within it were written, obviously. It didn't come into being until around 300 years after all of the people in the text had left, most of them killed. The Bible doesn't have to be God to be valuable. In fact, the New Testament wasn't considered scripture at the time it was being written. Specifically, Paul's letters were just male at that time. Does that mean that we can't learn from them? No. Are they, st they are still helpful. Uh, Paul was simply not talking to us. They were letters. It's the equivalent of an email, a text message. Paul actually never addressed his own letters as scripture, nor did he imply that they were equal to the scriptures. The status of his letters came centuries after his death. So Paul never treated his own letters as scripture. The Bible doesn't reference the scriptures as God. The Bible doesn't talk about itself. Of course it doesn't. 
That doesn't make it no longer useful. This doesn't mean it's not a useful tool. It doesn't mean that God can't bless you with it. It means it's not God. Just to get into some of the history a bit, the Hebrews maintained an oral culture. This meant that generations of their stories and teachings were passed on by word of mouth. If you've ever played the game Telephone, that you know, then you know it doesn't take long for the original message to be lost in translation. After generations of oral records, they begin to write them down. This means that in their purest form, they're still highly diluted. Does this make them worthless? No, they're still useful. The Bible itself is a compilation of Sumerian, Kemetic, and Hebrew texts haphazardly put together by the Romans in a series of councils to oppress the world and cripple the ecclesia that was active during their time. After this, it went through the process of being translated, edited, edited and tampered with over the next several centuries. That's just the history. If the Bible isn't perfect or is faulty, how do we know what's true? My answer to that is the word, which is God. God, the divine Elohim, has never stopped speaking and is the most credible source. This is how everyone in the Bible actually engaged God. They heard the logos. They heard the voice of God directly and they were led by it. This doesn't mean that they didn't read or write ever. This just emphasizes that they weren't led by their interpretation of text or scripture as Christians are taught to do today, but instead by direct communion and communication with God. As I've said before, the modern saints and mystics fail to replicate the power of the past because they try to get from a book what the saints of old got from God. The word, Logos, again, is God. The word is God. Scriptures are inspired by God, but are not God. That should be the end of the debate there. Texts may be about God, but are not God. The Bible doesn't contain all scripture. Every text in the Bible is not scripture. The Bible contains both scriptures and texts. These are useful tools, but they are not God, nor are they incorruptible. The only source of unfiltered, incorruptible truth is the direct voice of God. And I also believe that everyone can hear the voice of God, nor is it hard to hear the voice of God. God isn't meant to be tried or tested by scripture or the Bible. That's backwards. It's God who verifies truth as God is truth itself. To trust your interpretation of text more than the audible voice of God is both idolatry and a form of divination known as bibliomancy. People cling to their ability to interpret text because they surrender too much control when they allow God to decide what's true and what's not. By clinging to the text and their understanding of it, they maintain the ability to control their lives and push their own understanding, their own agendas, while pretending that it's God's. For leaders, they get to use the Bible as it was intended, to control the masses. Simply put, if they believe that God is the author and compiler of the Bible, and that the preacher or leader has the best understanding of the Bible, then that leader can make them do whatever they want them to do, because to disagree with or to defy the leader is to defy God. It gives them the perfect cover. <laughs> they get to be carnal and present themselves as spiritual. This is the trap. So I want to say this again. <laughs> the Bible is not the word of God. The Bible never claims to be the word of God. The Bible never says that the scripture is the word of God. The Bible never refers to anything written as the word of God. The word of God is God. Never has God turned into a book. Never was God a scroll. <laughs> never was God any of those things. 
this doesn't make the Bible or the scriptures or the texts or the letters completely useless. They're still valuable. They're still helpful. But to answer the question, which is the topic today of is it the word of God? The answer is no. Can it still be used? Yes. <laughs> so please leave your uh, comments down below. Um, all disagreeing comments, leave them down below. It's fine. I understand. Um, also, check the description down below. Um, links are there for all my other areas to contact me or uh, access some of the other resources and programs we have in Cave of Mystery. But um, that's it for this session. <laughs> Until next time, y'all be blessed.